On the 21st of April, 2023, the church in Wioso Diocese was blessed with the Episcopal ordination and installation of Most Reverend Samuel Nkwabwaten. We have an exclusive interview with the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, Most Reverend Gilbert Charles Palmer Buckle, who happens to be the head of the province, the Cape Coast province. Your Grace, you're welcome to Lumen Christi TV. This is a collaboration with the Depsocom of We Also. We are happy to have you. I'm very happy to be here too, myself. You were the homelies, homelies at the Episcopal ordination and installation of Most Reverend Samuel Nkwabwaten. What was your impression about the beautiful ceremony held? Let me begin first and foremost by thanking God and especially thanking my brother, Bishop Samuel Nkwabwaten, first and foremost for inviting me to be one of the co-consecrators together with his now emeritus Bishop of Yoso, Joseph Francis and the principal consecrator who was the Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana. His Excellency Henrik Mieczysław Jagosinski. I also want to say thank you to Bishop Nkwabwating for asking me to be the homilist for his ordination and installation. I will have to be honest with you. I was overwhelmed by the, the presence of the diocese. Massive turnout. Massive is the word. Mm. If I'm not exaggerating, the participation, the people who were there, must have been in the, in the thousands. Mm. That's the first thing I'd mm. have to say and commend we also diocese for. That they came from all the corners of the diocese to be present. It was massive. I would also like to use the opportunity to say thank you. I said it actually there at the ordination and installation. I want to say thank you to the chiefs and the traditional leaders. They were there in their big numbers. Mm. I don't remember having seen such a participation mm. of all the chiefs, their queen mothers, their various you know, personalities. I was very, very impressed. And I said it over there, a word of thank you to them for their presence. They added traditional color and culture to what was taking place. I'd like to use the opportunity also to commend the priests of Riosu Diocese for a great big yeoman's job. They did it beautifully. They themselves were there in their numbers. I'm sure all of them, 57 or 59 of them were present. And you could see how much they committed to the success of what had happened. I'd like to believe that they have been involved in preparing over a number of months for this, uh, you know, celebration. And I think God blessed their efforts. I'd like to use the opportunity to say thank you to the religious of the Riosu Diocese who were there and to the children who grazed it with adwa dances, with drumming and everything, and everybody who contributed. I'd like to say thank you also to the massive participation from other dioceses mm. outside we also diocese. Mm. So that is my very first, mm. you know, impression. Mm. One of deepest gratitude to God for blessing us with a wonderful day and those who worked hard to make it what it was. That would be the first. The other question about what my impression mm. has been. I've been here since Wednesday. I came two days earlier in order to sit quietly to listen to the bishop-elect, 
to listen to the bishop now emeritus bishop of the diocese to listen to all the preparations they have made and to see whether there was something to you know add in order to make sure things went on very well i must say i didn't have to add much mm -hmm. they had already done mm -hmm. everything that should be done and therefore i doff off my heart to them for the wonderful celebration and i think everything was beautiful mm -hmm. I must sincerely appreciate uh, your message of appreciation and gratitude to all these people. As head of the province, uh, I'm sure you might have uh, done some observations about how the young people of the houses were actively involved. Definitely, whenever it comes to preparation, the young people are the ones who shoulder mm -hmm. a whole lot of it. Mm -hmm. But maybe what I saw which gave me a taste of what they had been involved in was the day when the bishop-elect was welcomed mm. into Rioso. In fact, I went there personally to be present to see, and you could see the young ones in their Lacoste T-shirts with, you know, embossed behind Episcopal ordination, welcome to our bishop and the rest. I was there, the brass band, the flower girls who gave flowers, the Adwa dancers. I was there. Let me add, the police men did a great good job also trying to organize mm. us. Mm. But it, it was difficult containing the joy yeah. of the youth. Mm. <laughs> Once in a while, I had to myself, you know, drive them on mm. because they they couldn't be moved. They they wanted to carry the bishop elect on their shoulders, mm. but it was good to see that the young people really felt and feel part and parcel of this young diocese. Well, with the church in what we call synodal journey, the youth are the ones who are the future of this church. And therefore, I again salute them for their exuberance, their explosion, their participation, most probably like young people, one thing you always have to do is how to help them keep their youthful exuberance within the confines of propriety. That one is one of the jobs we would have to see how to do. How to harness their energies without discouraging their participation, their enthusiasm. Your Grace, what message would you like to share with the young people? Again, uh, knowing very well that they need to be guided, they need to be directed uh, so that they get it right. What is your message to them in the diocese? I would say that the message I give overall as my homily, I termed it, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. This had been chosen by the bishop-elect. The first reading was from the first book of Samuel. The little boy Samuel in the temple of Shiloh, sleeping in the night, God comes, calls him three times. He obediently rushes to the old man, Eli, only to be told, I did not call you, go to sleep. And then on the third call, Eli discerned that God was calling the young boy and told the young boy, when next he calls, Say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I would like to use these words, which I use for Bishop Samuel, also for the youth. My young people, whether you like it or not, we all needed to be guided by those who have some experience. We need to be formed. We need to be trained. We need to be helped to Keep our ears and our hearts open to God speaking to us. And therefore, just as Samuel, the young boy, was open to Eli, the prophet, whose eyes were dim, who initially did not know what was happening, but finally discerned that God was calling the young man and held the young boy to answer the call of God. And Samuel later on became a very big prophet of Israel. I'd like to 
encourage the young ones in this diocese. Please, listen to God calling you. God calls you through the scriptures. God calls you through the homilies of priests, the teachings and the rest. God will call you through the advice of older people. Please patiently listen to them and add that to your youthful, enthusiastic opinion. And you'll be the richer for it. And you will grow, I believe, to become prophets because all Christians are called to be prophets. Mm. Samuel was called to be a prophet. He needed an older person, Eli, to lead him to understand what he had been called to. So my young people, I love your enthusiasm. I love your joy and your explosion. But I beg you, you must be a listening generation. Just as I told the bishop, to be a listening bishop, listening even to the young people, listening to the priest, old and young, listening to parishioners, or I would also encourage my youth, please listen. Follow in the footsteps of Samuel. Be obedient to the older people who are placed in authority over you. And I am sure you will fulfill what God has for you because God has a plan for every person created in his own image and likeness. And you, the youth, it is your time. Imbibe everything and give us a better performance than we, the older ones, have been able to do. Indeed, beautiful message from the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, encouraging the young people to be a listening generation. Your Grace. What is your special message to Most Reverend Samuel Nkwa Boatin? Um, the bishop is about 55 years old, am I right? Mm. And the bishop is about 20 years already a priest. He has had a good bit of experience. You know, he's been cathedral administrator, he's been pastoral center director, he's been one in charge of justice and peace. You know, he has gotten a lot of, you know, preparation. And therefore, I don't think I have anything much to add to the words that I gave him that speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. He is assuming a very big responsibility that was started by Bishop Emeritus this year. 23 years of work. As the nuncio said, Bishop Asian, together with the church of Rioso, started to build the cathedral. It will be his responsibility to continue and complete the cathedral. I hear the diocese, God willing, will be 25 years in another two years. So he, he will have to hit the tarmac running, be in a hurry. And see, but I like to also say that he should know that you need to build the people mm. so that the people will come and build the cement iron rods structures. You need to build the people, and therefore, three responsibilities that are given to any bishop one, he's a high priest, and therefore needs to build the people in their spiritual growth and development, leading them to celebrate Holy Mass and as he himself chose, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I am sure that my brother is ready not only to listen to the people like Samuel, but also to lead them in celebrating and in worshiping the Lord God and even laying down his life for them. The second responsibility is to teach the people of God. And that is where I believe we need to do a little bit more. We have been told the Catholic population is going down. It may be true. What, however, I believe strongly is we need to get qualitative development of the Catholics. The scripture says, 
you are the salt of the earth. And if salt loses its taste, then it is not worth it, no matter how abundant it is. And therefore, even those who are in the church, the so-called 10% of Ghana's population, let us try to be real salt in our faith, salt in our life of Christian witness, salt at all times. So I would say that together with his priest, together with the religious, together with the leadership, let's focus on qualitative development, growth of our Catholics, catechetical formation, pastoral formation. Once the people have given their heart and soul to the Lord, they will automatically give their monies and whatever sacrifice they can give. Then the third point is that he's the shepherd. So we have a high priest, we have a teacher of the faith, and then we have a shepherd. And as a shepherd, he himself chose the story of the good shepherd. He says, I know my sheep and mine know me. And just as the father knows me, do I know the father? So I know my sheep. He would have to do everything to know them and to visit them everywhere they are, to listen to them and even let them know I am there for you and with you. And I believe those are the three things that every bishop would have to do and to do well. Already, he has been exposed so well as cathedral administrator, pastoral center uh, development officer. He has been associated with forming the catechist and the rest. He has been associated with, you know, um, the all sorts of responsibilities. So I believe Samuel knows mm. what to do. Yeah. And I'd like to encourage his priests. I'd like to encourage the religious. I'd like to encourage the lay faithful. Yes, the bishop will be a listening bishop. The bishop will be one who is a holy bishop, who celebrates the sacraments with them, prays for them, prays on their behalf. The bishop will be one who will teach them what the Lord God wants to. Sometimes he has to even denounce what is wrong, what is evil, what is unacceptable. I pray that the lay faithful, I pray that the priest, I pray that the religious will give him the necessary support because he represents communion, participation, and mission, especially in this context of what we call a synodal church, journeying in synodality, walking together, listening to the Lord together, discerning the will of God together, sharing, you know, resources together, intellectual, spiritual, material, financial, and gradually participating in the mission together. So I have a very great big hope mm -hmm. for the Diocese mm -hmm. of Riosu and its new bishop. Wow. Your Grace, beautiful message. Uh, before we wrap up, Your Grace, as a senior member of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference in active service, how do you intend to welcome the freshest bishop to the conference? I am laughing because 1993, I was the newest junior bishop. Wow. <laughs> in 2023, wow. I'm considered <laughs> the senior most. The senior most, 30 years of episcopal wow. work. And in congratulations, service, congratulations. I definitely embrace, you know, Samuel. Mm. And I'll just say, stand on my shoulders and reach higher. Wow. Stand on my shoulders and reach higher somewhere. Mm. That's all I can say. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much, Your Grace. Uh, we've been interacting and engaging Most Reverend Gabriel Charles Palmer Buckle, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast and head of the Cape Coast province. We've had a beautiful engagement with him. He has shared his message of goodwill to Most Reverend Samuel Nkwa Boatin. 
It's been wonderful engaging you, Your Grace. Thank you so much for this exclusive engagement. My name is Robert Della Mawenyega, and I've been interacting with Most Reverend Gabriel Charles Palmerbuckle, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast. This is a production by the Desocom of Rioso and Lumen Christi TV. Thank you for the opportunity. Lumen Christi TV, truly Catholic. Thank you. Lumen Christi TV, truly Catholic.